my friends, it's Megan. Today we are finding out what I'm going to be reading in September. September. September's TBR Cluedo. What? <laughs> I just... This is Satan's work. I just I feel like the whole latter half of this year has been me in disbelief at the fact that we are in the last like third of 2023. I feel like 2023 has just begun. <laughs> but on the positive note, I have planned all of my content out for the rest of the year. And if I get this all done, I'm gonna like give myself a crown or some shit because I am so excited for all the videos we've got coming and that is no exception in September. We've got a lot of fun vlogs coming, a lot of fun vlogs with a lot of fun books. So shall we just get into finding out what I'm gonna be reading in September with TBR Cluedo. I don't have my hat on. Um, I just didn't really wanna mess up my hair if I'm honest with you. If I'm completely honest, I don't want to mess up my hair. So we're going hatless today, TBR Cluedo. But shall we just get into it and get into the first roll? Okay, roll number one. Person number six, which is yellow, over here in Thriller. Let's see how many roll. Okay, we've got a three and a six. I am just going to go one, two, three. And that is number five, which is something with blue on the cover. So I should have said before we got into the roles, if you don't know how TBR Cluedo works, we have different rooms that correlate to genres and then we have prompts. And so I have to pick a book that fits that genre and that prompt. Roll one was a thriller with blue on the cover and I have chosen The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. I would argue that's all blue. It's not purple. It might show up on pur as purple on camera, but that's blue. That's blue. <laughs> keep saying it. Just keep saying it. Keep saying it out loud. And maybe you will convince Hope. I okay here's the thing I know this book now <laughs> is very heavy some of you I've been like whoa I'm so excited to read this and you guys are like Megan this book is a lot so now I'm prepared for how a lot this book is going to be I know we're following two friends who I think were in an abusive sex cult and then they managed to escape and years on one of them's doing a podcast about it and then I think the other one dies and this is all about unburying the truth as to what happened finding out what's happened to her friend but I don't want to say I'm excited to read it right but I, I mean most of the shit I read is like heavy and not exactly happy is it let's be honest here but this is one of the books that I have been wanting to read the most throughout, I don't know, the last year. And I just haven't got around to it. It hasn't fit into a vlog. Should I get the audiobook? Actually, that's the number one thing I need to know. Is the podcast element forecast? Does it sound like a podcast? Or is it just the same audiobook narrator reading out those parts? Because if not, I'm not going to get the audiobook because it'll make me angry. <laughs> I don't like it when you have a podcast in the book and we don't go there with the audiobook. It actually makes me upset. So please let me know which side of the coin this book falls on. But I really think Ashley Winstead could become a favourite author for me, particularly with her thriller stuff. I'm not as interested in her romance. Or I know she's got, I think, like a contemporary dramatic contemporary maybe coming out in 2024. I'm not as interested in that stuff, but I really did enjoy In My Dreams I Hold a Knife. And so I'm very excited to get into this one. I don't wanna say excited, but I think I'm gonna give this five stars. I'm gonna say it now. Wow, crazy. You're crazy girl. The last book that I went this hard for was The Writing Retreat and I gave that five stars. I think I'm gonna give this five stars. I'm hoping if I only lend that weight to a book occasionally, I will be correct. <laughs> I'm gonna give this five stars. So yeah, really looking forward to it. I'm ready to be disturbed. I'm ready to put, be put through it. Roll number two, person number five, which is white over there in romance. Let's see how many we roll. We've got a one and a three. Oh, we'll just go one. That is number 30, which is wild card. Yes! <laughs> That's great. Okay, we got the wild card. Roll number two was the wild card, which means I can pick anything that I want, which is exciting. And you would think I would go for like, I don't know, a kind of easy read, right? Take the pressure off. Take the pressure off. Let's go for something that I'm going to read easily. I haven't gone with that. I have gone with The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes by Arthur Conan Doyle. I have the Penguin Cloth Bound edition. I was talking to my patrons the other night about how I went through a phase of like buying, I, I own quite a lot of these penguin cloth bound classics. I haven't read any of them. It was during a period of my life when I was Delulu about I'm be gonna become a classics reader and then that hasn't happened. Although I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna finally implement a series, hopefully next year, which I'll maybe do like three to four episodes. I'll read one classic per each of those. So, I mean, you know, listen, murder mystery classic. Murder mystery classic. I a classic? Classic, not debatable, not up for debate. I generally think if I get into this, 
I'm going to be in for a treat. I've found audiobook of, because this is the Adventures of Sherlock Holmes and the Memoirs of Sherlock Holmes. Question, do I count them as separate books on Goodreads? Are these technically two books? Please let me know. What's the tea? What's the etiquette here? Do I, <laughs> do I count them as two books or one book? Because on, on Audible, they are two separate books. But I'm really looking forward to reading this. I feel like as someone who loves murder mysteries, this is something I should have read by now. So I'm going to read it. I'm very excited. I'm also really excited for what you guys know. One of my favorite things about Babel, for example, is the footnotes. This has kind of notes. Yeah, like they're at the back of the book. But like there's numbers for each of the short stories. And it's giving you context behind some of the history of that. I love that. I love that. <laughs> that really gets me going. So I'm going to read The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes and The Memoirs of Sherlock Holmes. Do I count them as two separate books? Please let me know the etiquette. But I feel like it's time I get into this murder mystery classic. Classic. Okay, roll number three. Person, oh shit, it was person number two, which is purple over there in contemporary. Let's see if we can get the rose prompt. We've got a six and a two. I really want to get the rose. Oh no, I can. I can just go one, two. <laughs> okay, perfect. We got the rose prompt. Row number three was the rose prompt. I've been trying to get the rose prompt more. Have I been reading many of the rose prompts on TBR? Not necessarily, but I promise you, I'm going to tell you now, I will have read all but one. This one book. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to admit this to you now. I will have read all the books that have been on TBR Clear this year by the end of the year. Okay, it's a big goal of mine. I'm going to make it happen. The one book that I will not finish that has been on TBR Clear this year, that I will not read this year, is The Floating Admiral, because I'm not doing this video this year anymore. There wasn't time for it, okay? <laughs> Planned out all my videos. I got realistic about what I'm doing. This video is not happening this year. It'll be happening February, March next year. So this is the one book that's appeared on TBL Crudo this calendar year that will not be read this year, but every other book will be, okay? I promise you. Whatever this book is, I know what video I'm going to read it in this month. So let's see what we get. Right. Righty ho. Let's pick one. Okay. 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 <laughs> I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Okay, all right. Hello, focus. Oh, Mrs. Death, Mrs. Death. Okay, okay, that's a book that it would have taken me a long time to get round to otherwise. But let's see where it is. I know it's down here somewhere. <laughs> where is it? Now, I think. A lot of people have picked this. So let me get my spreadsheet up. I will read out all the people because I think a lot of you have chosen this and it always kind of shocked me how many people chose this as their rose prompt pick. If you don't know, I haven't explained it to you. <laughs> when you join my Patreon, everyone gets to pick two books off of my physical TBR that they would like for me to read and it goes into the rose prompt jar. So people who said this, Shirin, Chloe, and Julia. Okay, no, only three. Only three. I don't know why I thought more people than that had picked it. Three people have picked Mrs. Death, Mrs. Death. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know much about it. I know it's a bit strange. Mrs. Death has had enough, exhausted by her jobs. Okay, I think she is like the embodiment of death. She meets Wolf, a troubled young writer, begins to write, who begins to write Mrs. Death memoirs. Okay, I don't want to know much going into it. I want to go into this knowing nothing and just have a fun time. <laughs> it's the goal. Oh, Idris Elba. Okay. <laughs> Just over blabbed it. I remember Kayla read this. That's the reason I picked this up. I think this was in the works. I think I got it for cheap in the works. The sticker didn't come off right. Look how fucking devastating that is, guys. Trauma. 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 The trauma. This is what trauma looks like. I'm excited. I feel like a lot of people who have read this have enjoyed it, and I haven't read a lot of like weird experimental books this year and I do love that. So I'm excited. What a good rose prompt pick. Roll number four, person number eight, which is blue. Where's blue? Oh, over here in nonfiction. Let's see, can we re-roll? Got a two and a two. Okay, I could go to either of these. Which one do I go to? Um, let's just go one, two. That's number 13. What is that? That is a TBR veteran. Roll four was a non-fiction that is a TBR veteran and that was perfect because I had a book that I am supposed to read this month that I have been putting off for a very, very long time. It is now one of the oldest books on my TBR. I got this way before I started my channel actually. So it's been on my TBR for over four years at this point. Is that right? Holy shit. <laughs> 
Oh dear. And that is Educated by Tara Westover. I'm finally going to read it. I have heard such good things about this. I know the author grew up, I think in the end of days, Colt, her didn't go to school. There was no like birth record. She didn't go to hospital. Her parents didn't leave medicine. And then she grows older and I think gets an education for herself. And it's a memoir about that. I know this is old now. I know. I remember when everyone was speaking about this and how much they loved it. And then I bought it and then never read it. So I'm excited to finally get around to it. I know that it's going to be poignant and I haven't read a lot of memoirs this year and I do always really enjoy them so this is one that obviously comes very highly rated and I'm finally gonna be getting around to it so yeah please let me know what you thought of this one I'm a bit nervous I don't know why I'm intimidated by it but I am but I, I it'll be fine I know I'm gonna really enjoy it hopefully <laughs> I think it'll be interesting row number five person number one which is green over in fantasy let's see how many we roll we got a six and a one where can we get to in that one Two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. That is number three, which is, oh my fucking God, start a new series. Start a new series, okie doke. Roll five was a fantasy and it was to start the new series. <laughs> But luckily enough, again, like the previous prompt, I had one that fit this. I was gonna be starting another series this year. It can, I think it is fantasy as its predominant genre. And that is Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson. <sighs> this along with The Last Housewife, one of the books I've wanted to read most this year. And we're gonna be doing it. Ooh, it's witches, it's a secret coven of witches. Okay, if you guys watched my video where I read the most popular books of this year according to Goodreads, you know I read Wayward which the less said about that the better, but it promised me witches and it didn't give me witches. It didn't give me proper witches enough. It didn't give me a witch vibe. It I was distinctly disappointed. I don't think this is gonna disappoint me. I think I'm gonna love it. I already own the sequel, so I better fucking love it because I never do that. But I wanted to make sure I had like the hard cover of both because I hate nothing more than when like I buy the hard cover of like the first book in the series and I take so long to read it and buy the second one that by then they no longer sell the hardcover of the second one and only sell the paperback and then they don't match and it's the worst day of my life. Genuinely, it's the worst day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know much about this other than we've got a secret coven of witches and they're like, I think like a secret governmental part of the government. <laughs> I don't know. I'm really excited. I think I'm gonna love this. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I'm gonna be reading it in like a week or two and I just literally am like throffing at the mouth. I cannot wait. Okie dokie, final roll. Person number five, I've locked my phone again, <laughs> which is white over there in romance. Let's see how many we roll. Oh, we've got a five and a six. Oh, okay. I've got to think about this because I feel like this is going to be my book cup pick. Because I feel like a lot of the roles I've gotten so far. Oh my gosh, where do we want to go? <laughs> this is too much, too much, too much on my shoulders. Okay, I'm going to go one, two, three. I'm going to use a staircase, which is four. Then what room do I want to go in for the book club? I have no idea. <laughs> uh, historical five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. Number twenty-four. What is that? Number 24 is a book over 400 pages. Okie dokie. A historical over 400 pages is gonna be our book club choice. And then the final role was a historical that is over 400 pages. And I gave this to my patrons to vote on. They vote a one round of T-Bell Clitter every month and then that becomes our book club pick for the month. And the choices that I gave them were Emma by Jane Austen, Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Doerr, Alias Grace by Margaret Atwood, and People of Abandoned Character by Claire Whitfield. And the winner was Emma by Jane Austen. We're reading Emma as our book club. <laughs> Holy shit. Why have we done this? No, I'm excited. I'm reading like two classics this month. What the hell? Who is she? Who is she? Where did you find her? <laughs> Who is she? Who is she? Where did you find her? I'm 
definitely no i don't know why i'm nervous right i love jane austen i have a bit of obsession with jane austen i was saying i was saying again to my patrons the other night i wanted like a course like this was fairly recently i think it was right before i started my channel i was like it was this summer where um i'd had a really bad mental health year at university and so we decided when we came home in the summer um from university i wouldn't work and i'd go to like therapy and i'd focus on myself but it kind of meant also i wasn't doing anything <laughs> when I was back that summer. So I took a course, like an online course about Jane Austen, like learning about her life, uh, whatever. But I love Jane Austen. I love the vibes of her stories. I think she is a really pretty accessible classics to read. Pride and Prejudice is still one of my favorite stories of all time. I read it a lot when I was a child. And to this day, the BBC adaptation with Colin Firth is what I watch when I'm sick. It is my, it's it's special, okay? It's, it's at the core of who I am is that BBC adaptation of Pride and Prejudice. I've never read Emma before. I've never read Emma. I think the only two Jane Austen books I have read are Pride and Prejudice and Persuasion. So I'm looking forward to this. I'm gonna listen to the audiobook on Audible that Emma Thompson um, narrates, which is exciting. And I think I'm gonna love it. I think I'm gonna love it, but it is daunting. It's a chonky boy. This edition is like 570 pages. <laughs> oh god! I think I'm gonna love it. I think I'm gonna love it. <laughs> Wish us luck. If you want to join us, if you want to join me in reading this, you can join the Patreon down below. Link will be down below. But um, <sighs> yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that is my TBR for September. Let me know what you think of this TBR. What do we think? I think it's a pretty good TBR. I'm excited for a lot of these. I'm getting some books off of my TBR that I have been daunted by for a long time. So I'm really excited to tackle them. But yeah, let me know what you think of this TBR. Let me know which ones you think I'm going to love. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you. I hope you're excited for the videos in September because I know I am. <laughs> and I will see you very soon in another one. Bye!